Hello friends, welcome back to the Yoga Attic. In this particular video tutorial, I am going to talk about Wago CC100, which is Compact Controller 100. This particular controller can be utilized as a PLC as well as a gateway. So it has its onboard uh, I/O system and it provides multiple uh, options to configure different protocols. And this particular controller can be programmed using codices. So before going into details, let's first understand what are the different Wago controllers CC100 variants are present currently in the market. So if you can see, it has two variants right now in the market. One is with dual core, okay, and second one is with single core. So being dual core, dual core will be with uh, more speed, more processing. And the difference between these two is on the core side, of course it is there, and on another side, in the single core, we don't have the can protocol support okay apart from that uh, most of the things remain same in this two particular controller so let's first understand how exactly we can configure so we need to power up using power supply 24 volt and they have given an option with the USB-C cable we can directly connect this controller and it has a default IP which is 192.168.42.42 with this particular IP we can directly connect to this particular controller it has a Modbus RS45 so and the 8 digital input so 8 digital input we can configure then 2 arteries we can configure so right now uh, this variant doesn't support PT100 but we can configure it as a raw input then we have 2 analog input which is only supporting 0 to 10 volt analog output 2 which is 0 to 10 volt 4 digital output with filled power supply can protocol supported at a different port and then we have, of course, Modbus, Ethercat, Ethernet IP, OPC UA, MQTT, Backnet, Telecontrol protocols, and different protocols over Ethernet for FTP and everything. The another variant is going to come with universal I.O. Yes, uh, universal I.O. means all the I.O. we can configure. So the digital input and the digital output can be interchanged with each other. So instead of having 8 digital input, 8 digital output, we can have a 16 digital input or 16 digital output. And same it goes for the analog input and analog output. They can also be interchanged. This particular controller will be released uh, later in this year. It is not yet announced. So let's first understand how we can configure the Wago CC controller. And we will start first with the upgrading the firmware. So in order to upgrade the firmware of the system, uh, we can utilize Wago Upload tool, which we can download it from the download center wago.com, the latest version, uh, by having your own account. Okay, and then in the same uh, particular uh, website, we can find the firmware version also for the CC100 that we can download. So, uh, firmware uh, version 26, 27 has not yet been released, it is not there, but uh, I think it will come uh, soon. So, right now, what I'm utilizing is firmware 26. Okay, so that we can download from this particular website and then uh, we can utilize it to upgrade the firmware of CC100. Uh, then we can update the firmware using Wago Upload tool. Uh, we can find uh, the controller using the IP address. Okay, so we are connected using uh, USB-C cable and default IP is 192.168.40.42. Okay, then we can click on the next search for your uh, firmware where you have downloaded. Uh, select and then we will click on the next and then the process of upgrade uh, will start so it will give you some warning uh, based on that you can take decision uh, what we have to do so once you click on the next it will go for uh, upgrade of the firmware so right now uh, I'm running it at a very high rate okay so this will take some time to get upgrade the firmware once the firmware get upgraded, then we can go and we can check it in their uh, web visualization or web server uh, by logging into it. Okay. So once we get here the confirmation that the firmware has been upgraded, uh, let's go to the web server and then we can log in using default credential and we can find here in the information that the firmware division has been upgraded to 26. So this particular browser we can utilize also to configure different networking. So right now as I'm connected using USB-C, but we can be able to configure uh, the IP addresses uh, of the system. Okay, so right now it is selected as a DSCP. We can provide a static uh, DSCP or anything. And uh, also we can uh, do, uh, make it switched or separated. So right now by default it has been switched. 
and we can provide here the name so these are the different configuration which we can be able to do it also and we can be able to change so it remains same as we were doing in another Vago controllers okay so there is no change on this particular part we can also utilize uh, ethernet setting software uh, okay Vago ethernet setting to connect and uh, uh, configure uh, this particular setting so two options are there which uh, anyhow Vago is providing so we can utilize any of them okay so using this particular software also we can be able to select uh, and configure the IP switched separated and everything okay it's, uh, on the configuration side so we can read and write all the configuration using this particular software and uh, we can utilize it now let's go and start installing the device description so here with codices we need to install the device description which we can go to download center and we can download it and then we can utilize uh, codices installer to install that particular device description so we can go to the path we can select the install file and then we can load the package and then it will start installing this particular package for the codices so that it can appear into the uh, codices IDE okay so this is uh, one of the most important step uh, which we need to follow for on this particular controller also after we have installed let's create a project so to create a project we can go to the ide we can select uh, the compact controller so here if you see we have two versions 9301 and 9401 so based on your controller what you have you can select the different set of controller so 9401 is what i have right now so i will be selecting 9401 and then we can click on ok and in a similar manner it will create the project and we will see the structure for the device okay so uh, in order to go online with the controller we just have to connect the USB-C cable okay into the USB-C port of the controller and then we can scan the network and we can find it directly over that port okay we need to provide username and password uh, which it will ask you to uh, configure for the first time and then with that particular we can log in and we can click on the login and then it will ask you to download yes we can proceed for the download and it will take some time to download the project and uh, okay here notification was that your password has expired please change your password so that can come and then we can go click on the start and we are on the online and it is plc is running one of the major thing which we need to do is the boot application creation because if you do not do this you whenever you reboot your controller it will you will lose your program and you have to download again and again so for that we need to go to the click on the application go to the properties and click on the boot application and select the options here to create implicit boot option during download and also maybe uh, we can check over the online change so this is one of the main step otherwise uh, you will lose the program whenever you reboot okay so with this particular feature uh, your program will be into the memory and it will always boot from that particular application so once we download uh, we can go and check on the files so uh, let me okay first let's go here and you see that application is running right now in the web server okay so we have downloaded application is running let me uh, power off the controller first okay so uh, once i do the power off and now uh, you can see that uh, i will lose the connection with the controller okay so let me just do the power off so we'll take out the power so this particular thing we do uh, to uh, have the uh, boot application created and it should remain into the controller otherwise a uh, lot of time you will face this particular issue where uh, you don't have the boot application you need to re-download again and again but now here i just rebooted the power and i can go to the application and refresh i can i need to log in again and uh, once i log in into the system we can see that application is there okay other if you do not create this particular boot application you will not see this application and you will be asked to download again and uh, once i log into the web server also where there also you can see that your program uh, status uh, will be in running okay otherwise you will get here uh, no program okay so if program is not there you will get here no program 
So in this way, we can create the boot application and we can be able to utilize it. So let's go for the IO configuration, how exactly we can configure the IO. So it has provided onboard IOs, uh, which is uh, like eight digital input, uh, four digital output, two analog input, two analog output, and two RTD. So uh, I have just uh, connected the cable. So this is the RTD, which I have con connected here. And uh, uh, we, I have uh, analog output. I have moved back into the analog input, OK? So that is how I'm utilizing it. And I have some digital output and digital input from my uh, DIY simulator box, OK? So uh, for the RTD, what you will see, there's an option to configure the RTD type. So PT1000, NI, and raw data. So I, what I'm configuring here is the raw data because PT100 is not there. Uh, so I can utilize uh, raw data to read it as a normal resistance change. OK, so that option you have to configure it. And uh, once we configure here, uh, when we download, uh, we can see all the data changing. So RTD is changing. And what I'm doing is I'm providing the digital input. And uh, with that, uh, you can see the change in the digital output also. Okay. So that is uh, on the digital input and output side. For the analog input and output, what I have done is I have looped back the analog output to analog input. So uh, let me uh, go to the program. So, uh, okay, PLC program. I will change the value from here. Okay, and then we can see on the analog input uh, the value will come. So in this way, uh, we can configure the different IOs and we can read back and the analog inputs and we can send the command over analog output. Okay, so if you see, uh, I gave thousand and I'm receiving also uh, almost thousand on AI one. So uh, these are the different configuration which can be utilized for CC hundred. It is uh, very compact and can be utilized for small applications, and uh, the cost wise also it is not that heavy. Okay, so uh, for industrial purpose it is cool and it is uh, uh, in less price itself. So that's all in this particular video and uh, I will be coming up uh, in the next uh, tutorial uh, for CC100 which will be having uh, more details on the communication side and different protocol as a use, utilizing it as a gateway. Thanks for watching. That's all for this video. Uh, see you in the next one.